Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Harsh Ali Khan. In this video, I'm going to explain you remaining parts of retirement benefits. The last video I have explained you number of benefits will be given by the employer to the employee, monetary benefits at the time of retirement. The one benefit gratuity that I have explained in the last video. In this video, I'm going to explain you about commuted pension, leave encashment and uh, refund from provident fund compensation, uh, retrenchment compensation. These are the topics I'm going to cover up. And in examination, they may ask you a theory question regarding what are the provisions regarding commutation of pension? What are the provisions regarding leave and cashment? So after watching this video, you will be in a position to write an examination confidently the provisions on these topics. Apart from the, uh, this, a number of problems will come across these points regarding commutation of pension. So before proceeding further, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain every point in detail. Now, the most important retirement monetary benefits are uh, gratuity, commutation of pension and leave in cash. These are the common retirement benefits. Now, the commutation of pension. Pension are of two types, periodical pension and commuted pension. Periodical pension means monthly pension which the employer gives to the employee after retirement. Before retirement, the employee will get the salary after retirement, the same employee may get the pension. So according to the provisions of Income Tax Act, periodical pension received by the employee is fully taxable under the subhead salary. There is no difference between salary and periodical pension according to Income Tax Act. Both are same, right? But commutation of pension means lump sum pension. At the time of retirement, the employer will give the option to the employee regarding periodical pension or commuted pension. Commuted means lump sum. Instead of getting monthly pension, they will get a certain amount, fixed amount, a huge amount at the time of retirement. That is called commutation of pension. Commuted pension, Income Tax Act has given the provision regarding some amount is exempted, some amount is unexempted. The unexempted commuted pension is taxable under the subhead salary. So here pension is the periodical payment made by the employer to the employee for the past services rendered. That is the meaning. If the employee prefers to receive it in lump sum instead of periodical payment, it is called commutation of pension. The meaning of commutation of pension, lump sum amount of pension to be received by the employee instead of periodical payment. Generally part of the pension may be commuted and the part may be periodical. No business organization, no company will give the 100% commuted pension. A part is commuted and the part will be periodical, right? And the treatment of commuted pension is thus under. So according to the Income Tax Act, the treatment of commuted pension is for government employees. The commuted pension received at the time of retirement is fully exempted from tax for government employees. Finished. Very easy rule. While doing the problem, we have to see if the employee is a government employee, commuted pension received is fully exempted, fully tax free. For non-government employees, uh, for non-government employees, two cases are there. First case, receiving gratuity. That means the employee is receiving gratuity and also commuted pension. Both. In that case, one third of the commuted value of total pension is exempted. In working note, we have to calculate what is the total commuted value, total commuted pension in working note. Of that total commuted pension, one third, up to one third is exempted. Up to one third is exempted. So now we compare exempted amount and actual amount. If the exempted amount is 3 lakh, Whereas actual commuted pension received is 4 lakh. In that case, 4 lakh minus 3 lakh, 1 lakh. That 1 lakh is taxable. Taxable commuted pension, uh, taxable under the subhead salary. So up to one third of the total commuted value of pension is exempted, remaining is taxable if the SSC is receiving gratuity and commuted pension both. Second case, if the SSC, if the employee 
is not receiving gratuity. Only commuted pension is receiving in that case. Half of the total commuted value of pension is exempted. First in working note we can do the total commuted value. Suppose the total commuted value of pension is 10 lakh. So half of 10 lakh, 5 lakh. So may exemption limit is up to 5 lakh. Now we compare actual uh, committed pension received. If the actual committed pension received is 4 lakh, whereas exempted limit is 5 lakh, so nothing is taxable because actual amount is less than committed value. Suppose if the commuted pension, one the half of the commuted pension is 5 lakh, exempted limit is 5 lakh, but the actual commuted pension received is 6 lakh. In that case, 1 lakh is unexempted and that is taxable under the subject salary. So these are the provisions regarding commuted pension. Now next is treatment of leave encashment. Many employers will give different types of leaves to the employees like casual leave, earned leave, privileged leave, medical leave, etc. Different types of leaves are there. So normally we divide the leaves into two categories. Leaves that may be availed otherwise it will get elapsed. One category of leave is the leave should be availed. If it is not availed, it will get elapsed. Future, you cannot take the past leave. So leave is open. It is better to take the leave. If the employee has not taken the leave, that leave will get elapsed. Forget about that leave. Second type of leave is the leave given here accumulated year after year. If an employee has not availed the leave, that will get accumulated. It will go on accumulated every year. Now at the time of retirement, he can encash that accumulator unavailed leave. This is the second one. The accumulated leave can be availed or it may be encashed. Now during the service period, if the leave is encashed by the employee while in service, then it becomes taxable to all employees that is both government and non-government. This is very important. If an employee has encashed the leave in service or during the service period only he has encashed the leave then definitely it is fully taxable for all employees government employees as well as non-government everybody it is taxable now for the purpose of exemption of leave encashment at the time of retirement the employees are classified into two categories now exemption of leave encashment will be given only if leave encashment takes place at the time of retirement so at the time of retirement, we divide the employees into two categories, government employees and non-government. For government employees, leave encashment received at the time of retirement for government employees fully exempted, just like commuted pension. The commuted pension received by government employees fully exempted. The leave encashment received by government employees at the time of retirement fully exempted. For non-government employees, some limits limit is given for exemption. That limit is least of the following four amounts. Income Tax Act has given four amounts. The least of them will be exempted. Remaining will be taxable. First one, cash equivalent to balance of the leave period. That is unavailed leave at the time of retirement. Subject to a ceiling on the base of 30 days leave for every year of service. Now here the condition is given. We have to calculate how many months unavailed leave is there. How many months? Example, if we calculate the unavailed leave is of 32 months, but the ceiling is given by the income tax act 30 days leave for every one year. That means for 30 years, 30 months. So up to 30 months leave he can avail, not 32, because ceiling is given by income tax act up to 30 days leave for every year of service. Second, 10 months average salary. Third, actual amount received or lost fourth one fixed amount of 3 lakh. So among these four items, the least will be exempted, remaining will be taxable. This provision will apply for leave encashment at the time of retirement for non-government employees. Average salary. Average salary means the average of 10 months salary preceding the date of retirement and salary means basic pay only. DA will be included if it enters for retirement benefit and commission if it is based on fixed percentage of turnover. Remember, you should not commit any mistake while calculating salary because these are the specific provisions given by Income Tax Act. We cannot change it. Normally, students will score less marks in income tax mainly on account of this reason. 
they will forget the provisions they will not remember the provisions if you concentrate uh, definitely you can be able to remember next refund from spf and rpf statutory provident fund and recognized provident fund in the coming videos i am going to explain you the detail regarding what are the different types of provident fund right now you remember refund from spf and rpf at the time of retirement it is fully exempted from tax for both government as well as non government last one retrenchment compensation retrenchment compensation compensation received by a worker at the time of their of his retrenchment if the employer has removed retrenched to the employees due to a number of reasons so at the time of retrenchment some compensation will be given so the exemption is least of the following three amounts the income tax act has given the three limits the least of these three is exempted remaining is taxable first one actual amount received second amount calculated as per industrial disputes act so all the retrenchment is governed by industrial disputes act so according to industrial disputes act 15 days average pay for every year of service completed or a part thereof in excess of 6 months this is the rule given by industrial disputes act thirdly fixed rupees 5 lakh the least among these three is exempted remaining is taxable that's all so in this video i have explained you about commuted pension leave and cashment refund from spf and retrenchment compensation so this marks the end of the topic retirement monetary benefits given by the employer to employees so apart from problems theory question may be asked so watch all the videos till the end so next video i'll start the problems on this gratuity and uh, leave and cashment and commuted pension on this topics we will do few problems then we'll proceed for other topics so if you are satisfied give a like to the video share my channel among your friends among your groups so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge give comments on these videos and subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed so viewers are many i'm getting many lot of views but subscriber rate is very slow please do subscribe it will motivate me to give more and more better videos knowledgeable videos on your subjects and by the super thanks which is given below my video inshallah we'll continue the problems in the next video